All right, so a while back, we uh, took a look at a trailer we have in the shop that's had some work done on it. Um, the work was done by another company, not by an individual, and that's kind of where our problem is. If uh, somebody had done this in their garage on their own and it was their own project, it's good for you, you sealed up the trailer. Um, it's not going to last very long. You can see in uh, some of the spots in the video, I'll try to slow it down, you can fit your fingernail in between the panel, the new panel and the original panel. And any spot that you can do that, dirt and moisture starts to collect in there. When you go through a freeze thaw cycle, it's going to lift the panel away and start to break the sealant and over time it'll fail completely and you'll get moisture on the inside so if you're planning on keeping a trailer for longer than five years these patch panels are really poor um, the one towards the rear looks like something done by a person that has never had access to the internet and has never researched um, any kind of Airstream uh, repair. Almost four years ago we produced a book that uh, goes over Airstream restoration from pretty much the coupler to the bumper. The cover is taken off the shell, the uh, steel chassis, and it also covers panel replacement. So whole panel replacement, patchwork, uh, it talks about all the tools involved, the sealants, how to place the, the panel without making a mess, and how to seal it up, prep it, what metals to use, how to properly patch a Airstream style aluminum panel. So there's other trailers that use this riveted construction. It's not um, only Airstream's thing. So we can't really bash somebody else's work without showing ours. Um, so here's some of the smaller and larger patches that are currently in the shop. I just grabbed the camera and did a quick walkthrough uh, and you can see how much flusher these panels are and how the rivet heads aren't dimpled and hammered in too hard. Uh, most of the time these will be buck rivets. Um, there are occasions when the shavable style rivet is, uh, is used here at the shop when there isn't access to the rear we got to use them um, also clients can spec using shavable rivets if they want to save some money to bucking you know if you're doing a damage repair you don't have access to the backside of a larger panel sometimes shavable rivets are going to be your most economical choice take a quick look at some pictures from other trailers that have come into the shop through the years. Uh, I just found these looking through our archives real quick. I'm sure there's a ton more out there um, but this first one here you can see uh, bubble foil style insulation that 
we're pulling back here, and on top of that is silicone. Uh, looks like a clear silicone or something. Um, and that is what this person was thinking would seal. Looks like there's three holes here. Maybe there was an awning or something. I don't know what was uh, what was there, but this is not going to hold up over time. And uh, the silicone probably isn't UV resistant and uh, using bubble foil to thinking it's going to seal your trailer is not going to happen. Water is going to end up running through here and going through the body and collecting in the belly pan where it will rot out the frame, um, which we see a ton of as well. That's a whole nother story there. Uh, so this piece of artwork here is, uh, yeah, it pretty much looks like frosting on a cake piled up. Uh, I guess they had a extra, an excess amount of sealant or something for this patch. So um, you can see we're prepping the whole ceiling. We're going to, we ended up putting a patch over a good portion of the ceiling. I think there was an AC unit that's out of the picture that was moved off of there as well. Um, I might be able to find some finished photos of that here. Um, so taking all that pookie butter off from monkey poo sealant, whatever you want to call it. You can see uh, the head of four. Um, turns out that they're sheet metal screws holding this patch down. So first of all, these screws are definitely spaced far apart. You can almost see some tenting right here of the panel. So it's not flush against the top panel. And uh, this is a huge gap here that moisture is going to find its way in, moisture and dirt. Um, I don't know for sure how well this panel was prepped before this person cleaned it up, but you can see kind of the mark where the sealant was, and uh, there's dirt on this roof. This has all been coming apart. Um, I would almost say that this was not prepped very well at all. I, they probably didn't even wipe, uh, they probably cleaned it, but I would doubt that they wiped it with a fast drying kind of um, isopropyl or some sort of prep all to clean the, the grease and stuff off of there. It almost looks like that sealant just cracked right off of there pretty easily. Um, again, I didn't replace this panel. I just found these photos and telling you what I think is there. Um, so bad spacing on the fasteners and just a whole bunch of, uh, yeah, here, this is a good actually photo where you can see that tenting um, and where that screw was. So I don't know what material this was. It could have been steel. It looks like it may have been an interior panel piece that they salvaged or something. Um, this is an interesting hole. I think my toddler daughter could probably draw a better circle than that. I don't know why it was hacked out. Um, for that reason, usually there's a vent here or something for a fridge or for the black water tank. You know, who knows? Um, but you can see these sheet metal screws here. And those don't bite into this thin aluminum very well. You can get a good purchase on them, but the potential to strip it out is so fine um, that you end up blowing the hole out. And actually, we'll show you in this video, you can see uh, one of these screws for sure was blown out and just kind of wiggling in there. So that's how to not patch a panel. All right, so we hope you uh, learned a little bit about the right way and wrong way to patch up an Airstream panel. And uh, we'll end this video with a little time-lapse montage of panels being replaced.